Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to uh, everybody and wherever you are in the world. As, uh, as the first slide shows there, my name is Clive Behrman. I'm the Director of Product Marketing for uh, an Informatica Cloud here, uh, specifically Informatica Cloud Extend. And I have the pleasure to be joined today by Eric Eklund, who's the Senior Salesforce Administrator for Core Visa Services. So let's take a look at the agenda today. Hopefully it's going to be actually very light on um, slideware and, and a, a significant portion of today's session actually is going to be Eric uh, showing everybody uh, his hints and tips on how he uses uh, Cloud Extend and, and process automation. So uh, I'm going to give a quick uh, overview of process automation. Uh, we're going to see... Um, Informatica Cloud Extend in practice, uh, a really, really great demo. Uh, we're going to do some question and answers. Uh, as the um, uh, administrator said there, the, the uh, phone lines have been muted, but please feel free to type your question and uh, questions uh, in the little Q&A box uh, on your panel there, and we will answer those uh, at the end. Uh, I've got some uh, little next steps. Uh, at the end, and, and that should uh, that should take us uh, hopefully to the top of the hour. So, um, before I before I begin, I want to give a quick introduction about the Informatica Cloud family. Uh, most of you are probably uh, all aware that the Informatica Cloud sort of cloud integration uh, really has has been the the core and the foundational uh, service uh, that's been around for a while. And uh, with this massive breadth of connectivity uh, between just not only sort of on-premise and uh, in the cloud, cloud to cloud, really it, it, it is the, the lifeblood of pumping data in and out and doing that integration with uh, connecting cloud apps. Uh, then more recently, you know, that we can get the data in and out of cloud applications, but the, the real... Um, uh, to get benefit out of the uh, of cloud and, and Informatica Cloud, cloud data quality and master data management delivers that real single customer view. So I can get data in and I can get data out. But also, what about the dedupes? How, what about a single source of a particular customer record? Do I mean, you know, Clive Behrman or Mr. C. Behrman or um, Behrman Clive? Are all these things related to one person, three people? I mean, you know, you don't, just don't know. So cloud integration, you know, allows our, our, um, to get data in and out. The cloud data quality and massive data management delivers that sort of single customer view, if you like. And then the piece we're going to talk about today is the cloud process automation. So I've got data in. I, I've got that single reference. But then... How do I, you know, don't mess everything up? How do I work efficiently with the data? Um, and, and again, we'll see Eric do some uh, great uh, uh, automation today. So that was sort of cloud in general. Let's let's take a specific instance uh, and let's look at Salesforce. So the vision of life with Salesforce is, you know, the sales reps will be more informed, you know, they'll increase sales effectiveness, they'll provide more value to their clients, we're going to uh, increase sales productivity, it's not on-premise, it's a cloud solution and everything is great. Um, sales managers will be uh, more, um, have more information at their fingertips, they'll have accurate forecasts, they can more effectively coach maybe more junior reps about how to tackle an account. And, you know, from, from my perspective, sales cloud and Salesforce is great because I'm going to make sure my marketing programs will be measurable. I will then know where I can put my, make, the, make my dollars uh, uh, more, more effective and get more bang for my buck in particular programs. Um, and finally, sort of customer experience, that customer support, if we use Salesforce, helps us with faster service response, maybe have better sales or service engagement. So really the life with Salesforce is pitched as it's 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 gonna be pretty good. Of course what often happens with Salesforce instead, you know, it, it's sort of 
often viewed as another corporate overhead. Oh my goodness, you know, I, I have to deal with uh, with Salesforce. You know, we see that sales managers don't um, see how it really helps their reps to sell. Sales reps are busy enough, but having to enter a whole ton of fields or maybe um, uh, you know have to search for information, and they don't really just use it as a as a resource. Um, Marketing doesn't really get uh, meaningful metrics, as we said. With, you know, maybe there's duplicate data, or because the sales guy didn't enter the lead source, we don't know if that was uh, a lead for a particular program. And just if we looked at customer support, um, if it's a singular system isolated on its own, perhaps customer support hasn't really improved with Salesforce because customers, when they're ringing with trouble tickets, sort of get asked to um, provide the same customer information over and over again. So we know Salesforce is good, but it also is a, is a big headache too. And, you know, this is what really happens with Salesforce. What started out as a nice kind of tight, sweet sort of system ends up with fields and views that are huge. You know, there's lots and lots of fields uh, that we added because uh, very um, business units requested them. Perhaps uh, people changed jobs and, you know, the, the, the thought of what that field was there for uh, loses its meaning over time and things like that. So, again, we started off with something very small and then we ended up with something unwieldy to, um, to use instead. And, and really, why did this happen? And from... My perspective, Salesforce isn't really mapped to the daily business use. It, it's really nice for contact and activity tracking. It's really good at that. Um, but as we saw on the previous screen, if we keep adding tons of custom fields, we get that kind of custom field overload, and sales reps and customer support folks and marketing folks really don't know what fields to add at what time and what fields are relevant in what particular context. And then, of course, other activities for Salesforce get ignored. So things like, um, can I use Salesforce for lead qualification? What about things that the salesperson might find useful to identify upsell or cross-sell um, candidates or leads? Why don't we use Salesforce more effectively for meeting preparation? Uh, what about sort of the quote-to-order process? How, how is that handled? Uh, and what about customer case sort of setup? and call resolution and that sort of thing. So um, we, don't, we don't really do mo most of those things because, again, they're not really mapped to that daily business use. Uh, also, if we create custom applications that, um, that we add to Salesforce, that also creates a, a dependency on IT. So the, the reason we employed Salesforce in the first place was to move more um, uh, quickly, make things a little bit more agile. But now if we're asking IT or we're farming it out to a third-party uh, third consultant, um, we've, we've lost that agility and we don't really have that, um, we don't really have uh, the, the time to market for uh, projects that we would, we would like as users. You know, in the end, we just create a backlog and IT has to fulfill that backlog and we're back into that same sort of uh, old cycle. And then thirdly, mobile users, you know, when they see these huge screens are not necessarily um, effectively enabled when they're at their desk. So how do I take that huge long screen and really use it on a, on a, on a mobile device for maybe field engineers or sales reps that are on the road? So... You know, we, we, we had a nice idea. We employed Salesforce. We, you know, we, we started to implement it and add tons of custom fields, and then it got unwieldy. And um, now, you know, we're, we're at danger of, of sort of messing up all the data that we so meticulously pumped in and out using some sort of integration engine that we, um, we rationalized with a single view of the customer all to now kind of mess it up by having this huge, long, um, confusing fields that we can poke data in at, at any time we like. So, as we said, our current implementation is sort of 
step-by-step approach on these single long fields. We remember sort of our best practices and our Salesforce training. Um, perhaps the way I would work with Salesforce in this sort of freeform um, environment uh, is different to the way my colleague would use Salesforce. And really, if I wanted to, to really make this a really, really great experience for my users, I really do uh, need to heavily customize that, maybe go to IT or custom coding, and that's really not what I wanted for, for uh, um, at the outset of when I uh, got Salesforce in the first place. So what we're going to do, we're going to use process-centric implementations instead. We're going to automate a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I'm not going to talk too much here, but, but basically the, the concept is I'm going to guide my specific users through a wizard-like process to work on specific data in context that they, that they really care about. Um, we're going to have universal access to the data, whether it's um, I'm using a, uh, uh, a tablet or, or, a, um, or my browser or, uh, or um, my mobile phone. And as you'll see, and you'll see some of the stuff that, that Eric's built, um, there really was no uh, Apex coding or hand coding uh, required. So again, on the left, it's going to be hard to use. On the right, you've got something easy. And I mentioned it already, the tool that we'll be talking through today is Informatica Cloud Extend. It's a process automation tool for Salesforce users. As I said, it's a do-it-yourself, no coding required. Um, we can see mobile and desktop wizards and um, works with standard objects such as uh, um, accounts, contacts, opportunities, leads, uh, and with uh, maybe custom objects that uh, you might define. Maybe there's a, um, uh, a call sheet or something like that as a, as a Salesforce object that, that, uh, that you would like uh, automated. Uh, who, who's it for? Well, the, the tool itself is great for sales operations, Salesforce administrators, customer support, marketing departments, um, or I, I even, you know, sort of, uh, we can automate some, some Salesforce uh, administration activities too. Again, the, why would we use it? It improves that end user efficiency, so I'm not wading through millions of tabs and tons and tons of fields. I'm just going to be shown uh, the data for a particular process that I'm doing. We'll see some of those. Um, I will ensure that users really won't undo all that clean data that I've, um, that I've spent doing. Uh, processes are consistent and repeatable. So that means, uh, again, my, whether it's myself or my colleague uh, and we want to do a, um, a, a lead qualification process, we can follow these guides and I would do it in the same manner that my colleague would do it, absolutely consistent, absolutely repeatable. And the nice thing is if we use these repeatable processes, it really does deliver accurate data for downstream systems. So maybe um, you use Salesforce as the source for uh, commission um, checks. So you know, using a, an opportunity progression wizard, perhaps um, uh, you can create a process that ensures later on down the, um, the line the data that was created during that opportunity progression um, actually goes towards creating the, um, comp the right compensation plans to the, to the right folks. And uh, again, how powerful tools, and, and Eric's going to show that, and we simply guide users through uh, steps, screen steps, and uh, a ton of automated work. So, the business experts, uh, I, I wouldn't call myself a business expert, but I'm, I'm a, definitely a business user. We design the process to match um, the way that we work. And my users, maybe uh, particular sales uh, folks, follow embedded guides within the screen. They don't have to scroll. It's all within context there. And uh, I've got a little flash there to show uh, just where the, the guide works. And one of the other benefits is that um, there's a, a, a really nice uh, a theme whereby that uh, mobile users using their Salesforce credentials 
they can get uh, Wizards 2 instead of that whole Salesforce experience. And maybe they can update an opportunity with meeting notes. And I just want to stress here that that update opportunity with notes is not just one field. We're doing a, a maybe we're doing a whole process. So I maybe update the opportunity with some notes saying I had a great time or had a great meeting. But then perhaps I want the next step in the process is to send an email to my manager or to add something to a work queue or, in fact, send out a chat or message to other people on, um, that are in my, my district or my patch that I've met with these folks. Or I assign a task to um, maybe a business development rep to call these folks in a couple of weeks. So even though I've, I've got a one-liner there that says update an opportunity with notes, I'm doing a complete full process with inside um, that, um, that very small screen real estate. And um, again, I could never do that if I was just using Salesforce. Uh, other things I could prepare for a forecast view, review. So maybe, there, again, there's a process on my phone before I'm... Uh, um, uh, I'm off to the sales meeting to, to quickly review my opportunities and find out if, this, if these opportunities in my, um, in my queue are in fact at the right qualification stage or not. Uh, maybe add a travel request. Maybe I, um, you've got a Salesforce is integrated with a travel system or a workflow system that processes travel. Uh, we could add uh, a travel request as a custom object for that, for that system too. Again, start a rapid response to a complaint. Here we're going to create uh, a field engineer. He's on site, and maybe he needs to uh, create a trouble ticket for a, a particular item. Again, we said record notes from meetings. And I don't want to beat this horse to death, but it's easy to design, no Apex coding with some great tools, easy to deploy. So once I've created it, I push the publish button, and it'll appear in, in my uh, Salesforce uh, environment for me, and it, it's extremely easy to use uh, for my users. So that's the whole idea of guiding Salesforce users to work much more efficiently. So I'm taking all of that overhead away of, of thinking about things, memory of what was my training, where do I find stuff, is it this in the lead tab, is this in a contact, is this in an opportunity, I know I'm going to do a guide and, and follow the guide, and it's going to tell me exactly what I need to do. So with that, um, you know, you've, you've heard me talk about the, um, the, the idea behind process automation. Um, I, I think really the, 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 the best person that could offer some uh, advice on how to automate and, and, and hear their experience uh, with this tool and the benefits they got from this tool is if I pass this over to Eric Eklund, who's um, really the, the Salesforce administrator for Core Visa Services, and he's going to tell you exactly how they use uh, cloud, Informatica Cloud Extend. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, everybody. Um, as Clive said, my name is Eric Eklund. Um, I am the, uh, t uh, the manager of Salesforce implementation uh, here at Core Visa Services. Um, and what I really want to do today is just mostly take you through a demo of uh, how we've used uh, Cloud Extend to solve some of our business needs. Um, so I won't bore you with too many uh, prior details, but um, just to kind of give you a brief background on who Corvisa is. So Corvisa, uh, we were founded in 2009 uh, here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, we were doing some uh, software at that point. Uh, in the uh, real estate appraisal space. Um, about a year later, we were acquired by StreetLink's Lender Solutions, which is one of the largest uh, appraisal management companies in the United States. Um, we had kind of a uh, comparable offering to theirs, and uh, by bringing us on, uh, they were able to kind of uh, flesh out their portfolio of, of products they could offer to lenders. Um, about a, a year and a half, almost two years later, we were repositioned um, as a shared services uh, arm of our parent company and StreetLink's parent company named Novation Companies. Um, so what we do then uh, under the Novation umbrella is uh, all of the software development, all of the IT, uh, marketing, Salesforce administration, HR, 
um, all of these shared services um, we offer to the other Novation companies uh, just so that they can keep costs down. Um, so it's a really great position for us to be in um, because we get to play with code, um, help out a whole bunch of different companies in different industries um, through Salesforce and through other, other uh, avenues that we can uh, offer that. In 2013 then, um, Corvisa made its first acquisition uh, of a company that we've rebranded as Corvisa Cloud, uh, and we became a Salesforce impl implementation partner. Um, so currently most of what I do uh, on a day-to-day -day basis is um, speak with uh, clients that have recently purchased Salesforce and try to solve their needs in, in uh, getting their company up and running and getting their users running quickly so they can see their return on investment. Uh, and just along the bottom of the slide here, then we've got uh, just the logos from the other companies, uh, Novation, uh, Advent Financial, which works in the tax space, uh, Corvisa Cloud, which in addition to implementing Salesforce, uh, also offers some internet telephony um, cloud-based call center replacement solutions. Uh, and then StreetLinks, as I mentioned, in the appraisal management space. Uh, some obligatory shots of our office. Uh, if any of you are familiar with Milwaukee um, or Schlitz Beer, uh, we are in the old Schlitz Bottle House. Um, we've kind of gutted out the inside, and uh, here are just some shots of our office. Uh, we've really kind of built an open space with a lot of collaboration spaces. Um, so I would just like to include that just to kind of give a, a little glimpse into our culture. So. Let's get down to kind of how we found out about Cloud Extend and, and the problems that we were facing when we uh, kind of turned to finding a solution like Cloud Extend. Um, we had two of our sister companies that were launching uh, initiatives simultaneously uh, that were essentially calling um, lists of leads that we've gotten uh, or accounts in different industries to try to get uh, points of contact and uh, really kind of offer our services. Um, the staff that we were going to be using to uh, carry out this calling uh, were all temporary staff. Uh, the vast majority had no knowledge of, of Salesforce or any prior use, uh, and really most of them had no knowledge of the industry that they were now being hired into. Um, we were hiring them to uh, call up, uh, you know, get a warm body on the phone, collect, uh, you know, verify, and, and really get these nice data points that we needed so we could start uh, promoting our business to them. Um, and we needed to do them in a, in a scripted manner so that we knew what they were saying every single time um, and cl uh, collecting every single point that we needed to every single time. Um, and really we needed to get this up and running very, very quickly with minimal time for training um, and a, kind of a large group as well. So uh, we were stuck. We, we had Salesforce. We've been Salesforce users for years. Um, you know, I, I was able to build all of the screens and all of the objects to capture all of these data points that we needed. Um, all of the reporting that would be powered by that, um, but really that's, that's useless if your people aren't entering that data correctly. Um, and having temporary staff and, and trying to rely on them to click through multiple different screens and remember which fields that they had to fill in and which ones they didn't um, was going to be kind of a, a chore. So the first uh, tool that we were looking at in, in trying to kind of automate this flow and, and script these calls for them was uh, visual workflow with inside of Salesforce. Um, it obviously sounds like it would solve our need, uh, being able to guide a user and hold their hand through the whole call, um, collect these data points, update the records appropriately, create new records if need be. Um, and it really is a, val a valuable tool for that. Um, the reason we stepped away from flow, though, uh, was that it was difficult for, for me as an admin to achieve really basic functionality that I, I thought that I needed. Um, and, and it was very time consuming for me to try to learn how to build things in flow. Um, declaring variables and uh, all of that kind of stuff that, that's more on the, on a programmer side um, just kind of was, was a, a giant roadblock for us because I didn't really have the time to sit down and learn it uh, as deeply as I would need to. Um, the other reason we didn't want to, to jump right into Flow is because then I uh, or a developer would be stuck having to do all the updating. We wanted to present these uh, you know, scripts over to the managers of their departments so that they could then tweak them if they felt like they needed to uh, you know, change a sentence here or there or uh, capture a new data point or, or something like that. So um, having the modifications uh, kind of rest on the shoulders of the admins and the developers um, just wasn't, uh, wasn't scalable for us. So around this time, uh, kind of fortuitously, we, we met the Cloud Extend folks down at um, 
Cloud Force in Chicago last year in 2012. Um, they were hosting a, a, an after party that our Wisconsin Salesforce user group was a part of um, and uh, met them, had a great time, uh, had a demo the following week, and then uh, shortly thereafter purchased a block of licenses so that we could have our sister companies um, you know, do this, this scripting um, for us. So why did we choose Cloud Extend over Flow? Uh, as Clive said, it's very, very simple. There's no code. There's no Apex. Uh, you don't have to write test cases. You don't have to declare variables. You don't even have to know what variables are, um, which I loved. Um, being able to turn this over to my team that has uh, no development experience and having them be able to create these flows very quickly um, was very important for us and was a huge win uh, on the Cloud Extend side. Uh, the time savings then uh, for not having to ramp up and learn about uh, variables and all of that stuff and, and how flow really operates um, you know, was, was invaluable to us. Um, the interface, as I'll show you, uh, if you have not seen it yet, is, is much more friendly, much less jarring um, than, uh, than the flow interface for me. Um, these flows can easily be modified by, by a non-admin, uh, someone on the management side, someone on a team lead side even, um, if we chose to give them that ability to modify. Um, and really, the, the user support was, was unparalleled. Um, I'm able to call in and, and get someone right away, send an email to the support, uh, the, the support email address, and they'll bounce back to me right away um, with some uh, tips or, or you know, asking for a time that, that's, uh, able, that I'm able to work with them. So uh, really great user support team. I can't say enough of, about how much that has helped along the way. So uh, at this point, I've done enough uh, kind of talking about who I am and, and the issues that we faced, and I want to kind of jump into a demo here uh, to just kind of show you where we are, how we've used Cloud Extend, and just kind of give you a, uh, a shot at how this looks in action. So uh, I'm sharing my screen now here, um, and uh, the first screen that I'll show you here is, is just the guide designer itself. Um, there's a really nice interface allowing you to kind of uh, group your flows or, or guides into uh, folders um, so that you can tag them however you'd like and be able to, to break them up logically. And then I have my, my designer uh, canvas here uh, so that I can easily um, you know, add new steps or, or rearrange them if I need to. Um, and, and the first thing that I noticed here when I you know, was first given a demo of Cloud Extend is how friendly it felt. Um, you know, just the, the rounded corners and, and uh, the uncluttered space, it was really um, pleasing to my eye and it was, enabled me to really just jump right in and get into it. So um, we'll kind of take you through a scenario here on, on the guide that we built here. So uh, one, of our companies, one of our companies had a list of uh, moving providers. So if you're trying to travel from uh, one end of the country to the other and you needed a moving provider to do that for you, um, we were uh, helping to book those for you. Uh, and find you the lowest rate. So we had a list of, uh, of movers from the Department of Transportation, um, and we needed people to call through the list. Uh, oftentimes we didn't have a name of anyone at the institution. Um, we just had the institution's name, so we wanted people to um, place a call, try to find the decision maker uh, to see if, if they would like to partner with us, verify some data points, uh, and then along the way we would want to create those contact records create contact roles out of that, um, update the account record with the information that we're gathering, uh, and really just guide the user through uh, a script along the way. So um, we would offer uh, you know, these points here, please call the company uh, and draw in some information from the account, such as the phone number. And then I can kind of write my scripting here, uh, include some images if I need to, um, and again draw in some information uh, here from the user record and just provide the user with a script so they can walk right through. Depending on the outcome here of the question, um, we'll be able to offer them different paths to go down. And then they'll just go through from point A to point B, uh, collecting information along the way, and at the end wrapping up, uh, the system will automatically send them an email. Uh, I can trigger workflow off of this and, and everything um, that I would normally be able to do uh, since it's all operating within Salesforce. So uh, that's just a quick look at the tree. Um, here, just to show you kind of how complex it is, you know, we were able to do some decision points if 
we weren't able to get anyone on the phone. We could trigger a key off of a status field to, to find out where we needed to go next automatically so the user didn't have to decide which voicemail script to leave. We were able to tell them which one to leave. Um, but let's jump into an account and kind of see this in action. So rather than relying on our users to go find the accounts that they needed to work, we were able to present them with list views and reports um, segmented out on a daily basis so that they knew which ones they were supposed to tackle that day uh, and avoid any uh, stepping on toes um, at that point. So uh, we had a, a list of accounts, as I said, uh, moving companies. And rather than relying on the user to figure out which of all of these fields they need to update, um, we now have a nice campaign guide section here uh, in the middle of our screen. And this is you know, editable. We can move this to wherever we want it to in the page layout uh, within the detail section. So I have a list of guides here that I can present to my user, and then they can choose the appropriate one. In this case, we only had one, uh, so the choice was pretty easy for them. But I can load up that guide here, and I can see that I'm pulling this information in dynamically uh, based on the uh, phone number field that I have for this account. So I don't have to move their eye across the screen, don't have to tell them to go find the phone number. I can present everything in this one frame for them. Uh, and kind of hold their hand throughout the whole way. So we asked them to call the company, and if they got someone on the phone, then they would go ahead and say that, yes, I, I did receive, uh, or I did get someone on the phone. Here's my script, as we saw on the previous screen, um, asking for the move coordinator, some kind of decision maker. And one nice thing that you'll notice here along the right is that it's logging a history of everything that I've done, all of the, the uh, screen steps or, or cards or whatever you want to call them that I've gone through. So I can easily go back to any of these if I need to. I can jump right back to the first screen. I can restart the whole guide if I need to. But so you can see here I'm, I'm allowing users to uh, enter data at this point. And as they're doing this, uh, when the guide is done, it's going to create that contact record for me. And I'm actually able to reference this contact throughout the guide as I'm moving through. So uh, I just pulled in the name here from the person that I just entered. I've got some more of my scripting here to kind of give our value prop. And then I can just carry through with the entire script uh, from front to back. And then at the end, um, you know, it'll, it'll do whatever I, I tell it to wrap up as. Um, and then once it's done, it will just reload the page. And any information that I've, uh, I've gathered here would update uh, the appropriate fields. Um, so I believe in this guide we're, we're using fleet size. Um, I'll, I'm able to drag this field, or not drag it, but able to pull that information in into my guide uh, and allow users to update it if it is incorrect. So one of the cards later on in this guide, I won't step through the whole thing, but uh, asks to verify the fleet size. We have 15, is that correct? And if they say no, uh, they can modify just from here uh, and save that so that when they do uh, finish the guide, it will update the record for them and they don't have to find which fields they need to go to. So um, that's kind of a quick overview uh, of the guide that we put in place uh, and the reasons behind it. Um, really, the most important things, again, uh, was speed to launch this. We, we had a new team that had a week to get up and going. Um, so just enough time for us to create these guides, test them out, uh, and then have them hit the ground running, uh, You know, speaking as if they were experts, following a, a nicely written script for them so they don't have to figure out what to say next. Um, just guiding them through the yes and no decision points or multiple decision points if, if, there, is a, if there is a case like that. Um, so the best benefit out of this, obviously, is you're capturing all the data every time. Your reporting then becomes much more valuable. Uh, you're able to kind of show those reports to the business uh, owners and the business leaders and, and give the results that they're expecting to get, um, all without uh, you know, having to program something or um, rely on the users to do things uh, properly on their own. Um, so, Clive, I think I will uh, turn this back over to you here. All right. Actually, before before you turn it um, back, Eric, I was going to uh, do some more slides, but I, I have a, a couple of questions. So, um, uh, one of the guests asked, uh, if, and if you don't mind answering, uh, you know, um, how many Salesforce users do you have? Oh, certainly. Um, so. Uh, currently, we are we have about 315 in our organization, um, and that's across the the five uh, business units that we run, all of all all out of the same uh, Salesforce org. And then, um, 
how many uh, folks were using the essentially the call script that you have here, the interactive call script, how many um, uh, uh, folks were, were running that? Sure. Um, so for these initiatives, we had uh, teams of 10 to 15, uh, depending on the, the business unit that was running it. So uh, all told, it was about 30 users, um, about half and half, I guess, between the, the two companies that were using the scripting. And then were, were did they? Uh, what was the sort of um, onboarding process for each each one of those users? Was it basically a quick run through through this, or you know you kind of got them in a chair and a phone and and a login and off they went? Yeah, it, it really made it a lot easier um, than than the you know previous onboardings we've we've done with sales teams or anything like that where. We didn't have to go in and, and explain where to find everything inside of Salesforce. Um, we were able to kind of bring them in, orient them within the screen, uh, you know, chop down the number of tabs that they needed, just tell them here are the accounts, here's the report that you work from, here's how to find it. You'll go into the account and then you'll basically just start the guide and, and go front to back. And when you're done, you'll go back to that report and then carry on with the next one. Um, so the onboarding process was very easy. Um, you know, maybe a day's worth of training, um, you know, just to, to kind of give them info on who they're calling and why, uh, orient them to Salesforce and Cloud Extend, uh, and then kind of show them the results that we're looking for out of that. Um, but very, yeah. very quick. And and um, and uh, as you said, as part of that scripting process that they do, it it schedules tasks, it sends follow-up emails, it 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 does all of those things because I don't. Basically, I'm not seeing any of that, right? I don't have to go into um, my Outlook plugin to say I've done this call and now send an email, and uh, it just does it for me. That's correct. I, I can create the steps here uh, within the uh, the guide designer to um, have it automate that email for you, so you don't have to have the user decide which template to use. Um, I can have them create tasks and then automatically create follow-up tasks for them uh, if they get a user that says, please call me in three days, um, we can create that task for the user so they don't have to remember to set that or set a reminder. Um, so yeah, it's all, it all happens behind the scenes for them, um, nicely, smoothly, uh, so that they're, they're able to kind of run, run this business very uh, independently. Perfect. Now, you, you mentioned visual flow. Did you, did you look at doing this in you know, just sort of visual force and Apex coding and stuff like that too, or were there other tools that you looked at? Um, not so much with uh, Apex or, or uh, Visual Force, I suppose. Um, trying to do it in Flow, uh, you know, we had a, a fairly basic script, I thought, that, that should only take a little while to, to try to get up and running. Um, but uh, just trying to, to crack Flow, uh, just the, the beginnings of it, I, I found was difficult enough for me that uh, it took me uh, as many hours to get just a couple of cards in place uh, as it did to to build the whole thing out here in Flow. So, um, you know, once I, I kind of went to Flow and, and found that I wasn't able to do what I wanted to do as quickly as I wanted to do it, um, you know, we, we kind of found Cloud Extend and, and it was just kind of off and running at that point. All right. Um, actually, now, now you mentioned sort of adding stuff. Could, do you mind just add, maybe quickly adding an email step just to, for the other guests on the phone just to show them how it actually worked? Certainly. Um, so I've got my guide here, uh, and if I needed to, say, add an email step in between here, um, I'm able to just uh, insert a step, Yeah. Uh, double-click on that, and then I've got um, kind of my uh, selection of what kind of step type do I want this to, to be. So I've got an automated step um, in which I want to uh, send an email here uh, using a specific template that I've already pre-built. Um, and then from there, I'm not entirely sure what I might have it named, but we'll try to find one. Oh, now this is interesting. So that that actually pulled all of the the predefined templates that you already have, right? From from your uh, in, in your Salesforce system, so you didn't have Correct. to. Correct. So yeah, yeah. Even though I didn't know the name, um, it will just pull all of my templates in an alphabetical order, so I can quickly find one um, and then just select it. Um, I'm able to kind of add other attributes of the email, you know, uh, who's going to be receiving it, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. 
and then just say OK there. So then when, the when, when this uh, runs the next time after I publish it, um, that email will go out at, at this point, assuming they get to it through the tree. Um, and I guess that brings up another nice point is that I as an administrator or a manager, whoever's modifying these flows, uh, can work on them as much as they'd like to uh, and save whatever changes they might want to save. But none of that is actually going to affect the user uh, until you do uh, a publish, um, which I found super useful because I could make more intense changes and I didn't have to do it in off hours. I could do it during the day and then just publish at the end of the day um, to do a little bit of testing. So um, very handy to be able to, uh, to publish separately from saving. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so, uh, well, do, do you um, another question actually? Uh, do you do you measure adoption rates before and, and after rolling out Cloud Extend, or or you were more interested in? Uh, I'm putting words in your mouth. More um, interested in sort of the just <laughs> like any administrator, just getting this project out and getting it going. <laughs> Yeah, um, not so much adoption rates just because we, we knew they were going to be in. I mean, these users were going to be in there. It's the only way they could do their, their job function that we were asking them to do. Um, but, uh, you know, definitely being able to report on the data that we were hoping to get out of, you know, contacting this list and being able to see, uh, you know, success uh, rankings between the different um, agents that we had, right? So being able to pull out and see this person hasn't been able to get in touch with anybody, this person is just leaving all voicemails, and maybe they're not doing the script properly. So being able to identify points where further coaching may be needed or uh, even just supervision, um, you know, it was really easy for us to get those out of there uh, just because we were doing all of the task logging and, and uh, you know, field updates behind the scenes for them. Got it. Got it. Now, and, um, since it was a <clears throat> excuse me, I say it was it was a moving company. Did did you have any mobile um, guides for maybe drivers or or uh, movers? Uh, not at that time. Um, we weren't really exploring mobile yet. Um, we were just we had kind of our team of users that were going to be tethered to their desks for yeah however many hours that day. So um, <laughs> no, we didn't we didn't really slip into the mobile uh, world yet. Okay. Uh, um, and did I hear you correctly that, that you wrote this out in under a week? Yeah, very very quick. Um, the majority of the time, I would say, is is just uh, doing our own testing to make sure that we're hitting all of the uh, scenarios that we could possibly hit in getting you know someone on the phone. So once we've once we went through and kind of fully developed our script uh, on our own side, um, putting it into Cloud Extend was was not time consuming at all. Um, maybe a day's worth after all of the changes they're through. Uh, and, and you know you get users to test it and you know kind of go back and forth on a few points, but um, yeah, after that point, the the training is super easy, very minimal, um, because it really does kind of hold their hand through the whole thing. So yeah, definitely able to get up really really quickly and and, and get these people to work as quickly as we could. And it sounds like you you rolled it almost straight into production. Did you use a sandbox at all, or or not really? Yeah, a little bit for sure. Um, you know, as, as any uh, admin, I try to do everything I can in my sandbox first. Uh, that's actually where we are now here. Um, so uh, we built everything out here, uh, pulled in some of the, the data from um, the list that we had, and uh, just had a, a couple uh, of the management users that were going to be overseeing this, these teams um, kind of run through the scripts with some fake email addresses and that kind of stuff to see uh, how it was all playing and, and if they wanted any changes for their their team before we kind of pushed it live for them. And um, and did you get anything working with the visual flow from Salesforce or not? Or, well, um, a little bit. Uh, it just we just kind of uh, gave up on it. it. It's something I keep turning back to just to see new updates. You know, whenever the new um, versions come out. Um, I mean, it, it's it's an impressive tool. I just find that for me, I, I don't have the time to dedicate to um, learning it as much as I feel like I would need to learn it to, to figure out how to make it do what I need it to do. So um, just jumping into Cloud Extend is, is way easier for me um, and much easier for me to, to train someone to do without any development experience. Thanks very much. That was a, a superb demo. That was, that was uh, really great. Um, I couldn't uh, ask for better, really, because all the things that, that you talked about or I talked about earlier, you kind of mentioned it was easy for you to get going and it was easy for your users to to step through. Um, uh, fantastic. Thank, thanks, Eric. 
So, no problem. Thank you, Clive. You know, Eric's not the only uh, guy that um, has seen benefits. We've just got a few examples here. Corby's are at the bottom, but something like uh, Plymouth Rock Energy that had uh, uh, a similar sort of thing with, uh, even though they didn't do call scripting, but they're doing uh, customer support, uh, 20% increase in agent product productivity, and uh, the time it took to create new account records and things like that was reduced by 85%. Absolutely fantastic. Marcus and Milichev, Scancom, and all those guys, um, real, all getting benefits uh, from using uh, Cloud Extend and adding that process automation to their um, to their environment. So we saw Eric was doing sort of call scripting. What? Where else could we use it? If you're stuck for ideas, um, you know, sales and sales ops. So meeting planning, maybe. Uh, uh, post-meeting follow-up, are there actions, are there tasks, are there follow-on activities from uh, having a sales meeting that you want to automate by following through a guide? Um, customer support, as we said here, case creation, account updates, you know, even simple things like perhaps there's a, um, a telephone number change where I'm going to change it in Salesforce, but perhaps that has to be pushed to a back-end system. So, you know, you could automate um, uh, cloud extend to call a, a cloud integration task in, uh, in a future release to, uh, that we're going to see um, to update that uh, telephone number and maybe an SAP or an Oracle system or something like that, not just in Salesforce. Uh, customer provisioning, so onboarding a, a particular customer. Salesforce administration, maybe there's certain, when I uh, create a new user part of that, create a new user flow, perhaps there's some um, process that you want to do every time that, uh, that you add a new user to Salesforce. Um, and, and for me, marketing, capturing uh, lead capture. So if you're using, say, web to lead, uh, if you're using web to lead on um, uh, within Salesforce, is there a process that you want to uh, kick off every time a lead is created through web to lead or case to lead or um, or web to case, uh, or maybe lead capture at a trade show? Perhaps you want to walk you through a guide while um, while I'm in front of somebody and uh, capturing sort of that more than just a, a badge scan. Um, and campaign management are the things that. When I create campaigns or send out emails, you know, maybe there's certain things that, that um, I want to send out an email and assign a follow-on task to a, a user to follow up that person. Um, all great things that we could do. So, you know, if you didn't get it from the horse's mouth, not the your horse, Eric, but um, if you didn't get it from the horse's mouth themselves, uh, uh, what a real... Um, great tool that uh, um, Cloud Extend is, please feel free, go on the App Exchange, search for Cloud Extend or put Informatica in the uh, little search box there, and you'll see the, the, the great reviews and um, people uh, writing about how they're using it. Uh, real, real nice page. And of course, click on the Get It Now button if, you, if you'd like to try it. Um, so, with that, uh, before I do my sort of wrap up and, and takeaways and, and next steps, uh, maybe uh, we'd like to um, uh, put the call out to, uh, if you have any questions, please um, ask them now. Um, let's, uh, uh, let's, um, did the operator want to uh, announce that or, or have I done my job? As a reminder, you may ask a question through the web console. Locate the Q&A panel on the lower right-hand side of your screen. Type in your question and click Send to Submit. Oh, now, so we've got um, some really, actually some really quite technical questions here. Can we create the flow in one org and publish them in another org using change, set, change sets? So, um, can I create a flow in one org 
uh, absolutely. Can I publish it in another? Um, what you would actually do in that instance would be create it in one org. You would export the um, tree, the actual logic. Uh, you just press the little export button. Actually, let me uh, let me show you that um, uh, here. Let me just share my screen for one second. Um, hopefully, you can see my desktop. So I'm in the in the guide designer. This is in a, a, a particular org, and um, if I select my guide, I have a guide here. Um, uh, I've got this guide called Add New Contacts. I can simply press the Export button, which will give me a list of uh, uh, guides I may um, maybe export, or if I open this guide, I think I can export it too. And then it's, it simply saves it as a as an XML file, and that XML file then um, I would do the reverse on Cloud Extend in another org. I would actually then do an import, and it would ask me for the file name, and it would import it in. So it's it's not um, it's not a case of uh, simply pressing publish here and exporting into a different org. I'd actually um, uh, remove the trees from or, or export the trees from one and. and Publish into uh, another. Now, um, can we use change sets for that? I don't know, but we can follow up with. Uh, we'll get the answer and we'll, we'll follow up. Um, but the the reason it works like that actually is a is a Salesforce reason because the metadata in one org might be very different than a metadata um, from another org. So there might be objects in in one that it doesn't know about that that exist in the in the other. So um uh the that's kind of why each org is essentially uh sandboxed and kept uh separate. So again we'll export from one the tree and import to the other. Uh and, and if there are actually incidentally and if there are objects and data fields that are not um that mismatch then the uh, import uh, mechanism will tell you which ones are, are missing. So you could you could work that out. Um, here we go. Let me just just go back to the uh, Q and A here. Let me have a, a look. Um, Oh, and uh, somebody asked about uh, sandboxes too. So um, uh, that's the, exactly the same uh, process for sandbox. So um, I can export the tree from uh, one org or from my sandbox org into my production org. Uh, so I export from one, import to the other, and um, uh, that's that's how you uh, move from. Um, Move from essentially sandbox to uh, to production. Hopefully that answered your questions there. So uh, before I wrap up, um, I, I do want to do a quick commercial. You're going to get uh, um, to see actually Cloud Extend uh, and a whole host of other things: um, Informatica Cloud, uh, Cloud MDM. And also uh, the the existing um, uh, on-premise product uh, from Informatica. So uh, at the Informatica World, that's coming up really shortly. So if you've not um, signed up, please uh, do so soon. So we'd love to see you. It's going to be a really good event. If you want to learn more about Cloud Extend, then the place to go, informaticacloud.com slash Cloud Extend. That will take you to uh, all, all the great um uh, resources that we have there. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, if you're all um, uh, in, see us in person, so we are um, participating in the uh, customer um, customer tours that uh, Salesforce are running at the moment. So if you happen to be in a city where uh, those are running, then uh, please come along and see us in person. Uh, and as I said, go to the App Exchange and try us at. Uh, 
appexchange.com, and then you can go and uh, try it. At, uh, try it now. Press the try it now button. So I think uh, if, if there are no more questions to our guest, thanks for um, watching us today, and a really Eric, a really big thank you. Uh, to you for doing such a super job and um, helping me out today. You uh, you really made my um, you really made my life easy. It was really uh, really really great demo. Oh, my my pleasure, Clive. Thanks very much. Thanks everybody. Uh, have a great day. <laughs>